and exercise. Have you ever wondered, are there other ways you could manage your time than keeping a tight calendar? That's what we'll talk about today. Time isn't the main thing. It's the only thing. Miles Davis. Today, we're going to talk about some concepts in time management for people who want to try something else. I tried for years to do task management. I used to do it. And to be honest with you, out of all the task management attempts I had, to do was the best. It really is an intuitive piece of software, website. You can use it in a lot of different places. I found to manage my tasks. But something was going wrong with it. Something wasn't quite working the way I had hoped it would work. So I started looking into some other ways of managing time. And I believe, too, Todoist can also help you with time blocking. But that's what we're going to talk about today, an alternative method of how you can take your time and figure out when you would like to do things. I think this developed out of this concept of people telling you to plan your perfect week. If you took a grid of a calendar and said, you know, if you had your perfect week, what would it look like? Well, I would get up at eight o'clock. I would eat breakfast. I would pray. I would read for the first hour. I would journal, you know, things most of us can't even do. But the idea is that if you can set the standard for what your week should look like in the perfect world and then try to apply it, not necessarily just appointments, But charting out what your perfect week would look like, I think that's where time blocking comes in. And it's a way, too, for you to make sure that you get the things done that are truly important. We can talk about tasks and cleaning your kitchen and doing this and doing that and helping this other person. But some things are very important to us, and sometimes we struggle to find time to do them. Maybe. Praying is a big part of you, but you always forget to do it. Or getting exercise in your day, but somehow it always just ends up at the end of your day and then you're just too tired. Is there a way, instead of reacting to your calendar, you can plot ahead and move forward with it? So what a lot of people do is that they'll schedule in a calendar and maybe they'll be even proactive and schedule those things like exercise and prayer time and going for a walk time. And it's all just split in so many different ways. You're going to create your podcast during this time. You're going to read during this time. But you only have 15 minutes here and there. And instead, what you're doing is you're going to take time blocking and try to come up with larger gaps, larger times that you can get things done in that perfect world. Instead, again, reading whenever you have a quick moment here or there you're going to set aside a half hour to just sit and read. Now, I do believe that time blocking is excellent for people who have a job that isn't exactly like my job and my upcoming job where I'm going to have meetings scheduled all the time. And we'll talk a little bit about what to do about that. It does benefit someone who's a creative worker, a self-employed person, someone who has a little bit more say over their daily schedule. But even me, who has a very harsh schedule when it comes to work, and then a very free schedule when it comes to home, can make use of the time blocking method to set my priorities straight. Now, because I was getting a new job, I had a previous time blocking system set up in place, and I had it in my old works uh, calendar. So suddenly I realized, oh, my old work calendar is going away soon. I have to move everything over. And so instead of moving everything over, I looked at this as a perfect opportunity to start fresh. Talked about that in past podcasts that sometimes artificial things are great times to start anew. Might be January 1st, New Year's, we're going to start fresh on our exercise plan. Or I bought a new house, let's change things up. And for me, it's this job. I'm looking at everything in my life right now and seeing what I could do better. One of the things I could do better primarily because before I was a consultant, I kind of had two jobs. I had the job with the company I was with, and I woke up early and got their work done. And then I had consulting work to do. And because that customer is on the Pacific time zone, 
I would then log in and start working for them. And somehow I was doing two jobs. Decided that has to go away. And of course it will because I will only have one job. But this was my chance to look at my perfect world, to see what I would like to do. One of the things, I've had some successes, as you know, and getting my house cleaner, being more organized, but exercise is always a thorn in my side. I want to do it early. I always do it late. I end up at the end of the day. I'm still on my Apple Watch streak where I have every day three rings filled since January 1st. I've been keeping that streak going, but I'm doing that at eight o'clock at night to get that exercise in. Now, with having West Coast time zone, I think I'm going to become kind of a morning person. I'll be able to get up at eight o'clock my time, which is six o'clock California time, and be a morning person, be the morning person I always dreamed I could be. That means I can get up, do some morning tasks. Found out I'm a great lawnmower early in the morning because I'm kind of dumb and lawn mowing doesn't take a great deal of mental acuity to figure out how to get your lawn mowed. But exercise, perfect time for me to exercise now is before work. Get it done and get it out of the system. So taking a look at my brand new time blocking system is a real step for me to just rethink my entire life. It's not about time management at all. So what you do is you might say that from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., I'm going to exercise. That sets me up for exercise before work every day. You could say Friday from 6 until 9, I'm going to play some video games and watch a movie because by the end of the week, I'm kind of tired. And so I'm excited to do something fun. You're creating boxes where you will be able to set some smart goals inside those boxes. You can even give yourselves goals. If you were a writer, you can say, I'm going to write 10 pages of my book every night. Or maybe you're cleaning out a particular room. I'm going to go through one bin and sort it out every week. But using that time blocking method, you can go about setting that example. So what you're going to start doing now is batching your time in like-minded things because that's why factories work, because we go and have people in a factory do a similar task all day long, and they get good at it. They get really good at putting this rivet in this panel and applying that panel to this car because they're just doing one thing and not walking down the line of the car and doing all the things. They get very good at this one particular task. And that's what we're trying to emulate. We could say, this is going to be the time I read emails and respond to emails. This is the time I'm going to work on social media. I'm going to do some reading for my podcast. Of course, I read about seven to 10 hours of a book every week for this podcast. So that is time I need to block away. Maybe now I'm going to work on cleaning my house a little bit from this time to this time. And at the end of the day, I'm going to reflect on how the day has been going. Now, for me, because I do have a job and I'm not a creative content person all day long, I have a calendar at work. It has all my meetings and appointment, and I do time blocking for work, but I decided to keep my work time block on my work calendar. And so my private, my personal time block is going to be just have a big block for work. But I did set up the perfect schedule for work. I'm now going to work like a person who lives on the West Coast with that kind of schedule in mind. Of course, I'm going to be working later. Think of all the things I'm going to get done in the morning. And then when I do get done with work, it's truly mine. It's also going to keep me from doing the thing I do right now, which is boot my computer first thing when I get up. Computer is not going to go on. I'm going to work a set schedule. You're going to be efficient with that time because you're going to focus on what we talked about. You know, Cal Newport talked about deep work. We did a podcast about that. So instead of I'm going to run over here and do emails and then I'm going to run back over here and write some more and then I'm going to go back and look at my emails, you're going to respond to emails at a dedicated period of time where you can focus on writing the emails. And then when you're trying to write, when you're trying to 
plan your next podcast, you're trying to exercise, your brain is not constantly thinking about the emails. You check the emails during your email allotted time, and then you're going to walk away. And that's the harder part because I know that there are people addicted to their emails and they can't stop checking their emails no matter what they're doing. So in this case, if you're going to schedule it, this will allow you to say, oh, well, email time is over. Now, for some of you who it will make you crazy not to check your emails, you may slot two email slots during the day, maybe one at the beginning of your day and one towards the end of your day. But that way, you can stop responding to everything and have it destroy your mental (laughs) ability to concentrate on anything. The nice thing about time blocking, too, is that it will help you see how you're spending your time. If your time is filled and there's just not a spare ounce of time, this is where we talked on episode three of this podcast, Ruthlessly Eliminate Noise, about how to get rid of some things. If your time is completely filled and there's not space for anything, no gaps, no time to exercise, no time to read your book for your podcast, Perhaps you're doing too many things and seeing how your blocks are taking up your time can help you in seeing what it is you try to cut out. It's also nice because then if you have goals, you can start scheduling those goals. So some goals for me are getting this podcast out every week. I now have to read seven hours of a book. So that's where I'm going to schedule that time instead of me trying to go, oh, well, I have a little gap of time here on Saturday. Let's see if we can read a book. I know I'm going to read my book. Instead of shoving that exercise at the end of the day, I can look at my time block and know when it is tentatively scheduled. Again, real life happens. So it may be that we can't do things exactly as our perfect week, but it also means that you can plan that week. So if it you followed it and you could get there for the most part, things will go pretty well. You'll see that the things you wanted to get done, including your long-term goals, which will be scheduled in your time blocks, start getting done. You'll be able to estimate how much time you have. And you'll be able to see that if your plan's too rigid, you know, too packed in, there's not a moment for you to do anything except these things, you're overscheduled. And if you don't schedule in some leisure, some fun, some game time, It's going to be a problem. I'm going to share in the show notes this article that came with Todoist about doing time blocks in Todoist. I am enticed by it. I really enjoy Todoist because I think it's been a very good task management system for me. And when I saw that they could do time blocking, I was excited about that. Another great place to do time blocking is Google Calendars. I heard a lot of really good things about it as a free calendar to try it. And then if the time blocking system works for you, you'll be able to go and find the right app, find the right tool. So my suggestions are those three, Fantastical, Todoist, and Google Calendars. Now let's talk about some terminology that we have when it comes to time blocking or this system. Time blocking is where we're going to put schedules in blocks of time and what we're going to do. What they call time boxing is when we're going to put specific tasks in there. For this period, you're going to work on this podcast. I could work on this podcast and the other podcasts I have all the time if I wanted to, but I also have other things I want to get done. So this way, the time boxing, where I'm actually penning in the task so it doesn't take all day, gives me more time to do those other things. Task batching, we talked about. That's where we're going to put similar kinds of work together in the same path. If you wanted to know the technical term, it's called Taylorism. Taylor is a guy who founded the first Ford factory, I think, or the first Ford factory was used based on this Taylorism idea, but that you do better when you do a similar kind of work at the same time. And then, in a sense, it's going to help us with time tracking, because then we'll be able to look back and update our calendar as we go to see if we actually followed through on what we said we did. We said we were going to exercise every day at nine o'clock. Did we even hit that target? And then if we're not hitting that target, what's getting in the way? Well, I look in my calendar. I slept in that day. Oh, 
look at this, the rest of the week I ended up logging into work early, not breaking free of that habit of working earlier than I should be working. Okay, so now I know what problems I can solve because I now have a realistic view of my time. Hopefully what this will give you too is that this, again, will give you a sense of what your priorities are. This will give you a sense of time tracking and time blocking. This will help you get done, not just the short-term goals, but your long-term goals, those things that take over the course of five years or one year that you want to get done, but it takes small incremental work. And for my example, I want to get two more podcasts up and running. And in order to do that, I have some tasks to do. Obviously, podcast used to take me, I think it was like 17 hours per 15-minute podcast because I was new at it. Now I'm better at it. So now it's taking me less time. Now I can block away the time to not just get this podcast done, the other podcast done, but then start these two new ones. It'll help me with those long-term goals of getting those done. So I'm going to put a lot of things in the show notes. There's some good resources for this. There's two people I have in mind when I think about time blocking. Carl Pauline has a fantastic productivity YouTube channel to show you not just this system, but all sorts of systems, all sorts of apps and technology, how it can make you better. Ali Abdal is a doctor who became an entrepreneur and now is doing his YouTube channel full time. He has, I think, the best time blocking video out there. It is built for real human beings who want to have fun, but also want to be productive. I believe he calls it the Trident Method. But the idea is it's not just time blocking, like we said. It's also going to be that time boxing where we're also going to put our tasks that we need to get done and schedule them. So I had a dentist appointment and a car appointment last week. Those went into my calendar. One nice thing about Fantastical is that you can have multiple calendars. And I could merge them into one. But what I decided to do is put time boxing in one calendar tasks and appointments in another calendar, and then click the buttons to show them both at the same time. Then maybe, but I'm trying not to make this difficult, is then I'll have a realistic calendar of how my week actually turned out. So time blocking is the perfect world. The time tracking is the realistic world or tasks that I have to do and try to schedule them at a specific time. The reason I think that this works so much better is when, in the course of my 15 years at my last job, I did task management. And when I took a class inside my company, it talked about the get it done method where you schedule when you're going to start those projects. So on this day, I have to write up a new proposal for a new business that we're going to pursue. I'm going to start working on that on July 1st. And so I would schedule in the task management inside of Outlook, I'm going to start this project at this specific time. That was better, certainly, because now I have these tasks and when I'm going to start them, and then there'd be little reminders to tell me when they were getting done. To be honest with you, I have an ADD problem, and maybe you notice this, but calendars and task management in their purest form don't work for me. They essentially make me feel penned in like my calendar is now running my life and I have no free will. The tasks, because they're not sitting in the calendar, get ignored, even though you can put a task panel up to see them at the same time. They're not scheduled, they're not on my day, and sometimes I just forgot to look at my task list. Maybe the day got busy with a customer issue and I never once looked at my task list. And then the last problem is it never kept in mind fun things. It was work all the time. You're going to go to this appointment. You're going to work on this project. You're going to do this thing. And so while it also made me feel penned in, it also made me feel a little bit like I had no other life. That's where we're going to go with this. Because the time blocking method, again, is about our perfect week, but we're not penned into it. We're going to try to keep it as best we can because, again, we agreed this was our perfect week, but this is, means that it's flexible. For whatever reason, if I need to work a little bit earlier one day, I'm going to end work a little earlier that day, or I'm going to end work a little earlier on Friday to make up for it. It will help me have a block of time where I can estimate, again, it's not realistic, how much time something's going to take me. 
And then these templates can get reproduced so they reschedule over and over again. I can keep it going for as long as it works. And if I find it's not working, then I can go back in and update it. And I've been tinkering around with some other apps that can integrate with calendars. Something like Toggle is an app for time tracking. And then I believe it can put how your day actually ended up in a calendar as well. So the thought was, is I'm just going to use this Toggle app to reflect the real world. When I'm exercising, I'll click the exercise button. When I'm done, I'll click off. When I start work, I'll click on. I'm trying again not to make this too complicated, but that almost feels like the one step too far. So we'll see. I'm going to try to get down, because we're all about small steps here, the time blocking system down first. And then I'll work about the realistic calendar. I might wait on that a whole year just to make sure the time blocking is in place and working. In the end, why this is working for me and why it's going to work for me is, like I said, I'm very strong in the ADHD realm. My attention span can be very limited. And they say when you have that, and I think that it's not a thing that you have or you don't have. I think there's a spectrum, which everyone believes, right, that some people are a little like this, some people are not at all like this, and some people are greatly like this. I fall on the greatly like this side of things. But there's something that they say people who have this have time blindness, which means time just flies away. And I think this is true for everyone. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just thinking my own situation is everybody. But you get into something. You're reading a book. You're playing a game. Maybe you're even raking leaves in your backyard. And suddenly you look up and it's five hours later. And you're, How did this happen? How did I let five hours slip away? And then there's this time blindness when it comes to the future. They have problems seeing what the future is going to look like for them. And so that means that when I had a paper due and the paper was due March 1st, my time blindness prevented me from seeing that I had to work on this paper starting in February. Because if I didn't start working on it in February, earlier in February, then suddenly I was going to not make my March 1st deadline. And that's where this time blindness is you using this time blocking method to get past your time blindness because you're going to follow this calendar generally. You're going to put in timing methods in there that will help you get things done, help you think about the future, help you think about the podcast that is going to come out on August 1st and not just the one that's coming out on Monday and give you that time to get things done properly. We're going to do a podcast coming up in a bit about procrastination and this book saved my brain, but it taught me I had a time and a procrastination problem. And then it went in and helped me overcome it. This method is going to take that next step and make me proactive. So in this sense, we're going to try to use these tools to prevent time blindness, to prevent the time from escaping us, even if you have problems with ADHD and Maybe you don't, and you just feel like your time is disappearing and you just don't remember where it went to. The interesting thing when reading about this time blocking method and talking about these strategies is that part of this time blindness has to do that ADHD people are hyper-focused, which makes you feel like that's not true. Some tasks, and I felt this myself, you have this amazing ability to focus in on something and not pay attention to anything else in the world. I was that way with video games. I get that way with some projects. I think this podcast is one of them. I am really into doing this podcast, and when I do it, I get focused. But it's not everything, and it's not the things that sometimes I should be getting done, like exercising. When I exercise, I never get super focused in it. I'm sitting there thinking, you know what I should be doing right now? I should be working on my podcast and playing video games. And I never think about focusing in on that exercise. So in order for us to use this system, this will keep us away from the time blindness where we lose track of time. It will keep us away from the hyper-focus that ADHD people can get where they're just drilled in on one thing, snap you out of it and realize, no, you're having fun working on your podcast, but you really need to exercise right now. So there you have it. That's the time blocking system. I'll put some examples in 
the website so you can see my example of what my time blocking looks like and then links to the article so that you can read them yourself. But I found this system is very helpful and I'm looking forward to giving it a little bit more time. Again, I just redid it. I'm excited because I think this is the first time I did my time blocking for my life of fun and enrichment and growing, not just about getting passed on, like cleaning my house and going to work. So it's a new horizon for me. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. My challenge to you is take out a piece of paper, an app, an Excel spreadsheet, whatever tool you like working on, and draw out your perfect week. Block massive amounts of time. You don't have to get that detailed. What time would you love to exercise every day? I know my answer is never, but if you had to exercise, when would you love to exercise? When would you like to get up and go to bed? When would you like to work? When would you like to get reading done, prayer time done? When would you like to enrich your life a little bit and make yourself better at something? Think about what it is and draw that out. Get crayons out, get your markers out, a whiteboard, and try to develop that perfect week. Then think about whether or not time blocking would be a good method for you. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember that you can subscribe to the podcast. And if you wonder where I'm at to subscribe to the podcast, you can go to my website, startwithsmallsteps.com, and check it out. I have buttons to all the major services. You can also watch it on YouTube. It's just the art with a audiogram over it. But you know what? That gets a fair number of views every week, too. So sometimes people like to listen to podcasts on YouTube. Please remember, getting your schedule in order so that you have time for the things that matter in your life starts with small steps. <laughs>